everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 10.3. This went through seven beta versions and the beta seven version is not the same build number as the final version. The final version, let's take a look at the build, is 14E277. Now if you're on the beta build, what you'll notice is that you have letters interspersed within that build number. In order to update if you're on the beta, what you need to do is delete the beta profile, reboot your device, and then check for an update and it will be there. The update was about two gigabytes for me. It's ranged in about 600 to two gigabytes, 600 megabytes to two gigabytes, depending on if you're updating from 10.2 or 10.2.1 or the beta version. So depending on that, your update could vary. Now this particular update has a very significant update that you can't see, and that's Apple File System or APFS. What it's designed to do is give you a speed increase, and I think you'll notice that throughout. Everything's nice and fluid, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But it's also designed for solid state storage, like you have in iPhones and the modern Mac Macs and, and most modern computers use as either a boot drive or their main drive for speed. You also have more power efficiency. It's also better for encryption. There's better encryption and more data will be encrypted throughout. And you also have better data integrity or basically a chance of it being corrupt is lessened because of the Apple file system. There's a bunch of other things and you can read about it if you just search for Apple file system. There's a lot to it. They've tweaked the UI a bit. The speed of it is, seems a little bit different, more smooth. Folders open and close nice and smoothly, but also fast. Everything seems to move nice and quickly, and 3D Touch is working nicely also. Everything's nice and smooth if you have a 3D Touch device. Now, as far as the battery life, battery life on the betas was pretty poor at the beginning, and then at the end it got really, really good. So the battery life has been really phenomenal. I easily get through a day and a half now since about beta six. And with this particular version being probably similar to beta seven, I would imagine the same beta seven easily got me through a day and a half. Only time will tell as far as that goes, but it's been really good for me as that, as far as that goes. Stability seems to be really good. Beta seven was very stable. Occasionally I'll get some frame rate drops when I'm opening and closing apps. And I'm not sure if it's the app themselves, such as inbox. I do get some issues with that, but it gets updated fairly regularly. And Google seems to fix that as they own inbox. So I'm not sure if it's that app or different apps throughout, but everything seems to be nice and stable as far as that. However, there are a couple bugs that still remain. The light and dark bug with the camera when you're going through different things, video recording, things like that, that light and dark bug is still there. It's not fixed at this point. And there's also a bug where uh, the screen will actually refresh or you'll actually have a reboot. If you slide the notifications down and what you need to do is hold here, hit the dictation button or voice button and then slide to the right and it will reboot or respring the device every single time. So this will come back up, ask for your password, you log in and you're good. So that will happen every time. Hold the left, hit the button, slide to the right. There's also another way to do it between switching with notifications as well. So those bugs are still there. They haven't fixed those yet, but unfortunately it's there. Hopefully they'll fix it soon. When you're installing the beta, if you hit the power button, it'll actually give you an information saying that it's installing just in text and then it disappears. Why that's there, I'm not really sure, but it's something they've added. They've also added iCloud analytics. So when you start up the phone, you log in for the first time, it asks you if you want to actually share your iCloud analytics with, with Apple. One of the new things you can see is actually under settings. They've unified your ID. So if we go into here, they've unified your Apple ID, your name, phone number, password and security, your family sharing, all of these things they've unified into one place and they're all shared here now. So that's really nice. It's not all throughout the operating system. It's one spot within the settings. Now also within the settings, if you have an application that isn't compatible. Maybe it's a 32 bit older application in the betas. This was showing up, but I haven't seen it show up here. It will let you know that you have incompatible applications. I haven't been able to find that throughout uh, with this particular update. And I do have some in here that are not really compatible with iOS 11 is really what it's warning you of. Uh, that has been I think taken away in this particular final release. I haven't been able to see it. If you see it, let us know in the comments below. One of the other things they've done is update Siri. So if you go into Siri, Siri is now updated so that it does a lot more things. So what that means is it supports paying bills and checking bills within payment apps. 
if they support that, the developer has to enable that. They can also schedule rides and basically in booking apps allow you to do that with your voice. It also supports for checking stats about your car. So if you have a car that's enabled with Siri, you can check battery level, things like that. Check if it's locked, fuel level, all sorts of things. That's actually enabled by Siri. And also within Siri, it checks cricket scores. So if you follow cricket, you can now get those scores as well using Siri. The podcast app has actually changed. So podcast has been updated to look a lot more like Apple Music. You've got my podcast featured, top charts, things like that. And within the podcast app, it basically has really been updated to Apple Music and has support for 3D Touch now. So if you have a 3D Touch device, that will work. And there's also a widget for it as well. So if you use a lot of widgets, there's a podcast widget that you can add if you go down here, go down to podcast, and there was some of the frame rate drop I was talking about. There's a podcast widget as well now that you can add if you'd like to use that, and it shows everything there. So those are a few little tweaks that you see. CarPlay has been updated, and within Apple CarPlay, you can now find EV charging stations. Also, it has shortcuts for launching recently used apps on the left, so you've got three apps instead of just one now. And music in CarPlay now supports the Up Next feature, so that's there as well. Now, if you're into renting movies, maybe on Apple TV, things like that, if you go into the iTunes store within here, if you want to rent a movie or rent a TV show, it will now work and propagate against all of your different devices. So if you rent it on your Apple TV, you can take that with you on your iPad or your iPhone or vice versa. So that works really nice as well. Within Maps, we now have the temperature. And if we 3D touch on the temperature, we can see up to the hour actual changes in temperature so that's been added as well and then also you can search for your parked car and maps so it knows based on your movement and location where parked cars are you can change this within the map settings though if you don't like that you can just disable it now a lot of us had issues with getting unwanted calendar invites and within the calendar we can now go into calendar and if we get an unwanted calendar invite we can simply delete it as an unwanted invite and report it as junk. That was a problem for a lot of people. It popped up on mine and we could delete it, but then they would let it would let people know that you were kind of deleting it or not interested and they would know you're real. So this kind of lets people know that you don't want it and lets Apple know it's junk and will help you get rid of that altogether. Within the home app, Apple has added support for different accessories that use switches and buttons and also battery indicator levels. So basically if you're using the home app to manage things around your house, different accessories can add those things within to let you have more information and operate switches and buttons. That's really all that does, but it's a nice little addition. There's other things as well as far as bugs. There's issues that could prevent maps from displaying current location after resetting. That's been fixed. There's been a whole lot of other bug fixes. And also voiceover dictation has been improved as far as stability for the phone, Safari, and Mail. Now, there's also this nice thing called Find My AirPods. So let's take a look at that. So you'll see my AirPods are here, and I can play a sound. I can drive to them, but we'll play a sound. We'll see if we can get them to make some noise if we've if we've lost one. So I've brought it up to the microphone and it actually makes this little sound to help you locate them. So it's really simple and really nice that that's built in as well. Aside from all those updates, many of you want to know how this actually performs in benchmarks. So here's the benchmarks. This is from today. 3465 for single core, 5718 for multi-core. If I go back to the last update, beta 7, which was on March 16th, 3439 and 5681. So again, there's those scores from today, from the final, and here's from beta 7. So we have a slight multi-core increase and single core. So that's pretty nice as well. But everything overall has been really good. There's been some updates for Apple Watch with theater mode. That's not coming to the iPhone with this update. Maybe we'll see something like that, theater mode or dark mode with iOS 11. And also there was a new Mac OS update today as well that has night shift available. Now, many of you have asked how it works on older devices. This is an iPhone 5S. I picked this up to do a, a long-term review and see if I can turn it up brightness wise at all. There we go. And it seems to be performing pretty well. This has the latest build as well, 10.3. And while it doesn't have a ton of apps on it, it opens and closes everything nice and quickly. Uh, texting seems to work pretty well. 
everything's nice and fast and it just seems to work pretty well. I haven't had any issues. I think you'll be pretty pleased as far as speed on these particular applications as far as what they do compared to what you had before. I don't know if it's better than 10.2.1, but with the new file system and everything else, it seems like it's pretty well optimized. I don't really get a whole lot of hiccups in it or anything like that. So this is the oldest updatable device. So any device 5S or newer can update and this is the newest. So they both work pretty well. Now, as far as the iPad, the iPad did not get anything significant. Everything you see here was carried onto the iPad, but there's no floating keyboard, no dark modes, anything like that. So that's pretty much it for iOS 10.3. Look for 10.3.1 maybe, or maybe even a 10.4 beta later on. And in June, we'll see iOS 11 at the developers conference. Thanks to Cameron for sending this wallpaper along. And if you'd like to send one along, send it to at Zolotech at my Twitter account. Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook and also send it to me at email at Aaron at Zolotech.com. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. If you found anything I haven't mentioned, though, let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.